Hi everyone, welcome. Another opportunity for us to be together online as the well on this Sunday. It's wonderful to have you with us. And um, we have a number of things uh, lined up across the day, which I'm really looking forward to. We're here with you now, and we have a great interview coming up um, uh, and an opportunity to worship. Later on tonight, we have uh, our service in the building at six o'clock. Don't forget the time change. And we have Phil Knox, our dear friend, coming over from Birmingham so uh, he's just powerful in Jesus so don't miss out it's going to be great if day. you can still join us six o'clock this evening it's going to be a really great day next week remember that we've got our, our this time together service in the evening but also the family gatherings in the garden at 3 15 and 4 15 do book on to those they have been so good throughout this summer time so join us for those family gatherings and also to mention our church meeting is coming up um, now this week on the 14th, if you would consider the well as your family, we'd love you to join us for that as we listen to God together. We share um, some of the behind the scenes, some of our thoughts at this time, and we pray together. So do join us for the church meeting this week. Especially if you're a Baptist member, please. We have a couple of important decisions to make about appointing a new trustee mm. and calling a minister in training. So it's an important one. Uh, the time. easy news for you is that you can join online. It's a Zoom meeting this time because of the COVID restrictions still. So half past seven this Wednesday, we will hopefully see you online. Uh, if you follow the instructions from the, the members Facebook group or from your emails, you'll find how to join us. So folks, we're going to spend time in God's presence again. Uh, I encourage you wherever you are to posture yourself, to make yourself ready to meet the Lord and, and remember that you're not alone today. Uh, you're part of the family of God on planet Earth. In Great Britain, there are thousands upon thousands of people who are acknowledging and worshipping God together this morning. You're part of the Well Sheffield here today and we bless you wherever you are and whenever you're kind of engaging with this time together. This, we're a little bit shorter than we have done uh, and a, just an opportunity to focus in on the Lord. So before we uh, worship together from some songs that our own team have recorded, uh, we're going to read from Psalm 100. So perhaps you want to stand up or, or close your eyes or something that helps us to engage. If I do both of those things, I won't be able to read the psalm. <laughs> so I'm going to read Psalm 100 to us as we begin our time. It says this, it's an encouragement to each of us. Shout with joy to the Lord, mm. O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. Yeah. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And so this morning we enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. Yes, we go into we his do, courts with Jesus. praise. We give yeah. thanks to him and we praise yeah. his name. Yeah. Why? Because the Lord is good. He is yeah. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. We worship you, we acknowledge your name, we praise you together this morning. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Holy, holy is he Sing a new song it's on heaven's mercy see worthy is the Lamb worthy is the Lamb who was slain holy holy is he oh we sing sing a new song to him who sits on
grateful to be able to worship with you. It's funny, I was thinking this morning about a particular time in my life where I moved out of a very large church. I was leading the young adult work there. The worship was all singing, all dancing, you know, flashing lights, big stages. And I went to a very small environment um, with a, a handful of people that were in a really difficult stage of life and just one keyboard player and I remember Holy Spirit spoke to me on that day really clearly Marjorie I want you to stand up and worship me worship me as passionately now as you did in the big environment in the corporate environment and that was a very important lesson in my life I've been worshiping Jesus passionately in my kitchen ever since but I have had to dig into that now in this particular season that we're in when we're often just engaging remotely like this I just want to bring that to you this morning you can choose to worship in private and have deep times uh, of the Lord and draw on the corporate like we've just had the opportunity to. And in that time, God does powerful things in our hearts and heads. So join me in keeping going in that. Yep. Just to remind you of some of the family news. Um, coming up that tonight, uh, we're going to have a wonderful night of encounter. I am so excited for this with our friend Phil Knox uh, coming from Birmingham. So do join us for that. Don't forget, it's at six o'clock um, because yep. of the football. And if you haven't got a ticket already, check out the website, wellshefford.com, to see if there are spaces and you need to book on to do that just because of the COVID restrictions. And families of young children, we'd love to see you next Sunday in our garden again. Uh, do book on for that. We'd love as many families to join us. That will be the last one over the summer season. Um, and we're really grateful to the children's team Massively, for what yeah. they've been doing. Thank so you grateful. So much. And great times. We have so much fun. Who knew that human boppet could be so much fun? <laughs> so join us for boppet later on. And the last thing, just to remind you that we have our church family meeting this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom, uh, which makes it really easy for you to join us if you consider the well to be your family and your church. These are really important times when together we discern what God's saying to us, the direction of travel um, and some kind of important um, family housekeeping kind of stuff as well. Uh, particularly, we're looking to appoint a new trustee for our charity uh, this week and also uh, discerning uh, whether we call Ben Jones as our minister in training. So it's an important one. If you're a Baptist member, please be present so that you can vote on those important decisions. We look forward to seeing you on Zoom, half past seven this Wednesday. Fab. So now we're moving into our interview for today. So we're bringing um, our, our content in terms of the Bible in interview form throughout yeah, these summer really, mornings. Really great, these guys. So um, have a listen up. Yeah. So we're here um, at the well today and our good friend Hugo is joining us. Thank you so much, Hugo, for, for being here with us. Pleasure. Uh, we have done a few things together in the, in the past. You've ministered in our church mm -hmm. on a Sunday. Uh, I can remember recording a Wise Lives episode with you and, and Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. That must be two or three years ago now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for being here. I wanted to ask you a few questions uh, about, I guess, how um, the Holy Spirit has, has overflowed in your life, how you have learned to walk with walk in step with the Spirit, like uh, the New Testament asks us to mm -hmm. do, and, and some of the differences that that's made in, in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, um, uh, Hugo described, we were in a, a, a session with our staff team today, and you were, you were saying that you, you wear a number of hats, you, you preach, you, you, you're running a church in Yapton yep. in the south of England, you uh, see yourself as an evangelist, you yep. spend time with uh, school assemblies and children, mm -hmm. um, you also have a kind of prophetic role sometimes mm -hmm. so just um describe well okay let's talk about being an evangelist how 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 did you know how why do you know to tell me that you see yourself as an evangelist okay so i became a christian when i was uh, 14 grew up in a, a baptist chapel environment very not holy spirit um so i um ever since i became a christian at 14 i wanted to talk to people about jesus and it wasn't until i was actually in italy on a project that somebody looked at me and said, you're an evangelist. Right. Um, because I thought every believer, every Christian, when you became a Christian, you wanted to talk about pe to people about Jesus. Sure. And that was something that just naturally came out of me. And so that's when that person said, you're an evangelist. I thought, I am an evangelist. Yeah, that's why I always want to talk to people about Jesus. It was helpful to have a language. Absolutely. And it was, it was helpful that somebody actually spoke it out over me. And then someone else on another occasion... Uh, I was in Florence in Italy, and they, they looked at me. This guy was from Uganda, and he said, you're going to be a pastor one day. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not no, going to be not. a pastor. No, 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 I'm not going to be a pastor. <laughs> that was, honestly, that was the I way know, I, I reacted. I'm not going to be a pastor. 
And uh, it, it had not such good connotations for me. It was just something that felt a bit stuffy and a bit restrictive, and I didn't want to be a pastor. Yeah. So uh, that's all changed now, but it's an amazing sort of place there's, to be. There's something about people calling it out, though, isn't there? And Absolutely. helping other people yeah. to identify who they are and their yes. gifts and so on. Yes. So uh, you would also say that um, the Holy Spirit's made just a huge impact on who you are and yeah. who you've become over the years. Yes. How did you, um, how did that happen if you grew up in a, a more kind of conservative um, Baptist chapel and so on? Well, I would say a big part, I would say massive. I would say massive. Now, I grew up in an evangelical church, uh, a, a great village chapel environment, Baptist. Uh, we didn't learn a lot about the Father or the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then when I came across charismatic churches, I was a bit freaked out, to be honest. Crazy. They were a bit hands in the air and jumping and clapping and singing in other languages, which I didn't quite get. Yep. Um, so I resisted uh, that and, and sort of went back to the comfort zone for many years. Then went to work in Italy, where I worked in drug rehab work. And while I was there, it was charismatic. Okay. So they were all uh, talking about testimonies of coming off of drugs and alcohol you know, uh, where God redeemed them and saved them and miracles were happening and then they started speaking in tongues. And so I worked in that environment, helping them with their, you know, difficulties with drugs and drink. But myself, I was still, uh, let's say, frozen in my, uh, in my expression of being a Christian until uh, I started, to, the more I read the Bible, and, I, and I've always loved the Bible, I've always loved reading the Bible, mm. but the more I read the Bible, the more I saw the Bible was full acts particularly of miracles and healings and signs and wonders. And so I started to change my thinking. Studied in, in Labrie with a man called Francis Schaeffer yep. for many years, and while I was studying there, again, reading the Word, looking at theology, I realized probably I was wrong, and uh, actually the Word of God is always right. So yeah. that's why I started to dig into, I want whatever God has got, not what I've been taught, but if it's in the Bible, uh, I want it. So that's when I started to get hungry for it. Wow. So again, it's a, a, um, being shown that something else was possible, being amongst people who were moving in the charismatic gifts and so on. Absolutely. Actually helped to, to make you rethink your own position. Yes. It's usually that way, isn't it, with God? It's normally that way. We normally start way. with one place and he says, no, no, that's no. Right. I am bigger right. and I am better than what you imagine. And yeah. Let me show you yeah. something else. Yeah. And so um, uh, 1994 came along and uh, you were impacted by the power of the Spirit. Yeah. Through... At, at that point in my life, I was really in a place where I was thinking, I was now in a, in a, in a semi-charismatic church and we were hearing about the power of the Holy Spirit, but I didn't see a lot of evidence. Uh -huh. And I can remember driving down the road one day thinking, God, there must be more than this. Yeah. And that was literally my thought, there must be more than this. And then things were kicking off in Toronto. And I went to a meeting in Bogner Regis, uh, dear old Sonny Bogner, sunniest place in Great Britain, by the way, um, apparently. So uh, I was in Bogner Regis in a Baptist church, and they were inviting people forward for prayer. And uh, I won't go into all the detail, but it was very powerful. I had a massive encounter with the Holy Spirit where I felt electrified from my head to my feet. And it was like in, within three days, it was an overnight change. God took stuff out of me. He put stuff into me. And it was just like a, a, a transformation. And even for our church at the time. Wow. And, and how did that feel? I mean, were you afraid by that process? Surprised? I have to say, I have to say that is true. I mean, yeah. people talk about, you know, I often say to people, when the Holy Spirit comes or when angels appear, the first thing the angels say to Mary, to the shepherds, yeah. fear not, don't be afraid. Yeah. It, was a, it was a mixture between terror <laughs> and wow. Yeah. So I was excited, but I was also like, what is going on? Because yeah. I knew that what God had done in me was very dramatic, very powerful. Yeah. And it was almost overwhelming. But I had said to God, here I am, do whatever you want. And he did. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that mixture of, you know, God, you've done awesome things, but what is going on in my life? There was a lot of crying as well. Whenever people get touched by the Holy Spirit, I always say to people, don't be afraid of the tears. Mm. Tears will come because God is bringing up healing. And that happened to me a lot. And, and it happens yeah. all the time that people, when they come to know God. I mean, that's it. We, when you offer, when you genuinely surrender and offer yeah. yourself to the Lord, yeah. he, he knows what needs to come out as yeah. well as the stuff that needs to come Absolutely. in and, and the power. So that was a while. That's a long time ago now. 1994, 20, what is that? So, seven years ago now. There we, amazing. Yeah. And um, 
So how does it look like for you now mm -hmm. to move in the Holy Spirit? What does it, so the, the gifts of the Spirit that we see mentioned in the, in the, the New Testament pages and so on, mm. how, does, I mean, does that, how does that work out in your life? Well, having been a Christian for many years before 94, I was already committed, 20, how many years, 22, 23 years committed Christian already, read the Bible many times through, I knew the Bible really well, uh, and it suddenly, it was like I was driving a car in first gear, and suddenly I get another three gears in the car, okay. second, third, fourth. So it was actually, for me, quite an overnight change, is before I was speaking in tongues a little bit, I had many people lay hands on me, pray for me for the gift of tongues. Right. Now I just knew I could speak in tongues. Okay. Because I was singing in tongues, I was sometimes shouting in tongues during worship, whereas worship wasn't a priority before. It was, let's get through the worship, let's get to the word. Yep. I now just loved the worship, and, yeah. I, and I couldn't, and in fact, I leave worship. Uh -huh. So I, I found it hard to stand still playing songs i would want to jump and sing and dance so there was a joy it, it absolutely there was a joy that was just brand new mm. uh, i had joy before but now this was like now i'm really joyful it was just like everything was accelerated and, and, and just much bigger and much more vibrant That's and so with exciting. the tongues as well yeah yeah it was so how do you how what what how do you maintain that so we were ministering, Hugo, Kindly, and Hanukkah, and Anna were here with us in the church with the staff team we were ministering mm, together. Mm. And uh, you literally are, it's, uh, you could describe it as an, an overflow. Yeah. You're talking, and then one mm. minute, and suddenly prophetic words will come, or yeah. a, a tongue, various yeah. different languages, as yeah. I was listening in. I yeah. think, I, goodness yeah. knows, do you have any idea what languages I, I, they are? Well, I, I've, different people over the years have told me, I've spoken in eight different languages that yeah. they understand. It uh -huh. was Korean and Chinese and Russian uh -huh. and Tamil, Hausa, uh -huh. other languages like uh -huh. that. And specifically people have come up and said, now you're speaking this language. Or you're... And in different meetings, different contexts. Yeah. Um, and so the, going back to the, when, it, when it just literally comes out of me, Jesus said, you will receive uh, rivers of living water will flow from your inner being. Mm. And that word apparently is, your inner being is koilias which means from your belly. Mm. And that's why often you see when people are touched by the Holy Spirit, they might jerk or jump or, or shake. Yeah. But I always feel sometimes it from... Sometimes double over. It, or sometimes double over. And I, yeah. I feel it always from here, and oh. it just whoop, comes up. So the river just starts to flow, um, and, and often it will catch me by surprise when it happens. But not that I'm overtaken by it, but I'm always saying, Holy Spirit, here I am. So mm. I willingly give myself to Father God to do whatever he wants, and the Holy Spirit just flows out of that, even this morning. Yeah. I'm saying, Holy Spirit, do whatever you want. Yeah. And it does look strange at times. I yeah, um, yes, <laughs> for each of us. And, I, and mm. I, perhaps sometimes there's an element of personality in there where yeah. the kind of loud, confident, extroverted people are more confident to do that out, mm. out, out loud and so on and up front. But at the same time, what have you cultivated over the years that keeps that river running uh, okay. and bubbling up from within simply time with god i've always loved the word i've always loved the bible i still read it and graze through the bible every year mm -hmm. um so over a period of i used to read the bible in a year now i tend to do the bible every two years uh -huh. sometimes might be more sometimes less but i'm always in the bible always reading the bible uh, I, I'm going through the Psalms at the moment. I'm also uh, in the book of Samuel mm. and I'm reading the book of John. So I'm in the Old Testament and the New Testament all the time and I just have it as a regular part of my and life. that feeds? Uh, feeding myself on the Word of God yeah. and just being in the presence of God. Yeah. And, and that being in the presence of God can be walking in the woods. It can be on the hills. It can be in my bedroom. It can be in the garden. It doesn't have to be like shut myself away in a cupboard. It might be that. Yeah. But for me, it's just having a natural, normal relationship with God yeah. on my bike or walking by the beach or, you know, so I'll have prayer times in all sorts of different places. But the word of God, the Bible is always uh, something I'm, I'm consuming all the time. Amazing. And that is, um, I, I guess that's where we, we're wanting to get ourselves to in a place mm. where uh, we overflow. So the yeah. gifts of the spirit make sense in real life, in yes. the everyday uh, as you say, the conversations at the street corner. Yeah. You, you said that the people in your village know you by reputation. They know, now. They know me. They, they know Hugo. Uh, he's the pastor of Yatton Free Church. We live in a village, so it's a very village environment. And they've known. We do a lot of outreach in the village. We put a big village, uh, big tent on the village green every year. Do children's holiday clubs. I've been going to schools for 30 years doing assemblies. So even now, people in their 30s remember me from when they were in primary school and I was doing school assembly. So I have a lot of yeah. that conversation 
with people. We do football competitions. We do all sorts of fun, outreachy things. We've also got a brother-in-law that uh, my brother-in-law's got a farm where we opened the, the farm to the public and all the, we had thousands of the public come through to see lambs being born, but it was all part of the church. And so yeah. it was outreach. Um, yeah. That's the evangelist. I'm the pastor, but evangelist. But that's life. I mean, life, what you're yeah. saying there is in everyday life, you're everyday learning life. how to weave the gospel in. Absolutely. How to dis how, and the fact that the people in your village know you by reputation means yeah. that you've deliberately cultivated a lifestyle that tells people about Jesus or, at least, right. or tries to show Jesus off or yeah. reaches out and loves people. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's it, isn't it? We're given the gifts of the Spirit for a, for a yeah. purpose. Yeah. Uh, it's to demonstrate the love of God yeah. to others. Yeah. and to bring hope to a broken yeah. world and so on. Yeah, so, well, listen, Hugo, just as we finish, would you be willing to pray for us yeah. today as a church and as yeah. everybody who's watching in on this one, yeah. just that we would, we would move and live and breathe the, by the power of the Spirit yeah. in the everyday. Yeah, okay. That'd be Certainly awesome, thank you. Certainly well. And I just, uh, wherever you're listening to this, why don't you just close your eyes and put your hands out in front of you? Yeah. Uh, because that's what I did many years ago when I said, uh, Lord, do whatever you want with my life and so father we just want to say that for each one of us that are watching right now we say do with us mm. whatever you want with our lives because we declare that your plans are the best your ways are the best and you have good things for us an abundant life jesus you came to give life in all its fullness and we declare as well that it's not by our might or by our power but it's by the spirit the Yeshua, yes. of the living god so we say holy spirit yeshua is lord Come, fill us anew. Breathe on us, breath of God. Yeshua, you are the Lord. Abba, you're our daddy. And I just pray, Spirit of the living God, that you would transform us as a church, as a fellowship, as individuals, but also corporately, yeah. because the world is desperate for good news. And the good news is the gospel that we have living within us. In Yeshua's mighty name, we pray. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hugo, thank you so much for your time and your prayers. Pleasure. It's been great to see you again. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Right. Isn't that so good, guys? Uh, thank you so much for sharing your hearts with us. And it's uh, amazing that we can learn from each other and we can hear different stories of the way God moves, different ways we relate to God. But it's the same call, isn't it, to seek first the kingdom and to be disciples of Jesus in the everyday. So thanks so much for, 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 for all that wisdom. And uh, I bless you. We're coming to the end of our time now. So, uh, Lord, let's, let's pray together. Lord, we choose to follow you again we this week with heart, soul, strength and mm -hmm. mind. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for it as a pack, as the Well Sheffield across the city and across the region. Mm -hmm. uh, we love you. We worship you. And yeah. we pray for your spirit to remind us of your goodness and your presence each day, each hour in the week to come. And I bless you this day. Yeah. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again soon so have a great week and we love you lots and we'll see you soon, soon.